Household wealth has dropped by $13.5 trillion since the beginning of 2022. And this is a real problem. We also know inflation is not going to go down to the 2% mark that the Federal Reserve wants. Well, likely not in 2023 as well. But here's the problem. We are now seeing spending just balloon out of control. The American people continue to spend, and it's not just because of the holiday season. It's because they do have some excess money. And I want to explain where that's coming from. We know U.S. consumers are continuing to spend. Discretionary spending on travel has actually picked up over the past 12 months. And experts are revealing that consumers would rather spend money on experiences and memories as opposed to material goods. But I want to ask you one question. Do you feel the same way? Would you rather spend money on travel and memories or get some type of material good? like a TV, an iPhone, or a new pair of shoes? Let me know down in the comment section below. Now, all of this additional spending is currently hurting the US economy as we are struggling to get inflation under control. The Federal Reserve is attempting to, it is bringing inflation down. However, we peaked at 9.1 and we are currently sitting at 7.7. .7. So, it's not like we've really come off the top, but it has helped. But here's some numbers that are actually scary. 63% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, yet we continue to spend. 30% of young shoppers say they will overspend this holiday shopping season. And 32% say they will go into debt just to make it through 2022. And in a time when we are currently seeing our debt explode to record highs, that's a major, major problem. But here's where things are really getting out of hand and this is where it's turning into a problem. And the writing has been on the wall for some time. However, we continue to spend. Now, I wanna read you a comment that I received just a few days ago and it really shows what people are doing in order to save money. And this could actually help you. Now, this person wrote to me and said, I have three part-time jobs right now and I still struggle to pay all of my bills each month. I took your advice and I cut my expenses down. I am only 22 years old and racked up $42,000 in debt, most of which is credit card debt by now. But here is what I am doing to get out of debt. First thing I did, I moved back into my parents' house. This will save me $1,950 every month. In order to save money on food, I am now only buying food that is very close to its expiration date as it normally is 75% off. I am no longer paying for internet as I always have my phone anyway. And now I'm able to pay down my debts, put some money into an emergency fund, and hopefully soon I'll be ready for when this recession truly hits. That's what they said. Now, I wanna to touch on this for a second. And the reason why is because this is where things have been getting out of control is over the past uh, few years. So let's just take this person, for example, I don't know their entire story, but I'm going to guess here. They're 22 years old. We've been in this uh, situation for almost three years. Okay. So this person was 19 years old. Let's just say when this whole fiasco started uh, around the world, right? The virus. Well, they were 19 years old and my guess is they racked up the majority of their debt over the past three years. Why? If this person is mostly uh, in credit card debt at $42,000. My guess is they have a lot of stuff to show for it. Okay, they, maybe a car, but they say most of this is credit card debt. And so they probably have a car, right? They probably have, a, maybe they're making payments on a cell phone. We don't know. Probably have nice clothes, computers, electronics maybe a TV, they probably paid to, you know, furnish their apartment at one point, and then they were paying on top of that $1,950 a month, so that makes it very difficult, but they, they've gone away from a lot of that stuff. So here's where things are interesting. We're not getting a, new, a next stimulus check. You think that fourth stimulus check is coming? It's not. So all those people are asking, hey, when's that next stimulus check coming? Well, it's not. 
we are not going to get a stimulus check from the U.S. federal government. It's not going to happen. They can't afford it. They cannot get Congress to pass any additional help for the American people. So passing a stimulus check that's going to give money directly to people in times of high inflation, it's out of the question. And then on top of that, more PPP loans for small businesses, for people that run a very small business and are struggling because they're just not selling their goods or services. That's not coming around again. We're not going to get that. Uh, unemployment benefits increasing by $600 per week. Again, out of the question. It's not coming. And that's what's scary is some people are waiting. They feel the impact. They know it's coming. They feel the, the stress. And they think the American, the U.S. Uh, government is going to come and bail us out. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen this time. SNAP benefits. We're not going to see a large increase like we did back in, in 2020 and 2021. It's not coming. It's just not. And as a result, all these expenses that are continuing to go up, it's going to be on you. It is going to be on you to deal with them. Now, here's what I can tell you and here's where I want to help. I received a question from somebody is how can I save money on food? Food is my biggest cost. What can I do? Well, as this person uh, alluded to, you can actually buy expired or close to the expiration date um, of food and you can save money. I do this all the time. I don't buy expired food. Uh, usually when something expires, I throw it away. Uh, I know some, and again, don't hate me for this, but I know some food, even though it passes the expiration date, it's still good. For me, it's like it hit the expiration date, you know, that's it. But I do buy food from grocery outlet that is close to the expiration date within a couple weeks. And it's still good food. Cereal, cookies, chips. It's mostly just, you know, packaged or processed goods. But again, it's still food. So if you are struggling to just pay for the the essentials right food consider uh going that route and possibly getting something that is close to the expiration date for me i'm normally saving at least 50 percent this person said uh they're saving uh normally about 75 percent off uh when they buy something close to the expiration date so right there that might be something you want to look into but let's talk about younger adults moving back in with their parents this is something that I've been seeing more and more of lately. Here on this channel, the, the majority of people that watch my videos are uh, over the age of 45. However, there are now more people coming in uh, and subscribing that are under the age of 45. A lot of them 18 to that you know, 35 year range. But here's the big thing. Did you know that younger adults ages uh, 18 to 29, they're actually moving back into their parents at the highest rate since 1940? You, you know why? Just to save money. Just save money on rent. But that's also a double-edged sword, and I want to explain why. Even though people are able to save money, like this person, um, they don't have to pay that $1,950 a month for their rent. Now, do they uh, help out at, at their home with their parents? I don't know. They, they didn't address that. But when younger adults are attempting to save money, which is good, but when they have more and more money saved up, let's say five, ten, twenty thousand dollars saved up, the problem there is when they see something they want, they're more likely to buy it. But at the same time, they're not buying it using cash. They're buying it on credit because they have that safety net of savings or their emergency fund. This is a problem. This is a real problem that we are now starting to face is that more and more people are buying items that they think they need when essentially they don't. And again, this goes to, for items and services. A lot of people are buying luxury goods, watches, higher end vehicles, things that they think they can't afford. Because think about it. You save $1,950 every single month because you don't have to pay for rent but yet you go out there and get the new BMW that's cost you, you know, $1,300 a month, that's a problem. And this is starting to get out of control where the American people, and especially uh, younger consumers, and I'm talking, you know, my age as well, right? You know, 35 down, what we're doing is we're going and getting into more debt 
because we've heard that that story from the rich people that that you need debt. Debt's good because debt creates wealth. Not in every situation. So here's what I can tell you. As we get into 2023, as we see interest rates either continue to rise or just plateau, what we're going to see is people are going to be tired of saving, tired of hearing about those recession and inflation talks, and everyone's going to go out there and spend. Spend money on travel, spend money on the newest, latest, you know, iPhone or, you know, gadget here and there. They're going to spend money. So the expectation is inflation is going to come down. We're going to come off that 7.7 number and we're going to know this week. But here's the problem. Even though inflation is expected to come down, it will likely settle and we will hold between that 5 and 6% range. For most people, that is not doable and they can't live if we are currently seeing inflation for a full year at 5 to 6%. So, I promise I will fill you in on all the latest news and updates as we get them, but as for right now, do what you can, start to save, pay off debt, and control your finances. That's the one thing that you should be doing at this time.